Hey everybody, Syndicated Pipe Club time once again. Dave here on April 7th recording time. You'll be getting this on the 14th and let me tell you, April 7th is just going to be one long day because we're doing some batch recordings so you're going to see the same outfits again in a week. We'll change up next week, don't worry. Or the week yes. after. You'll figure it out. Yes. Just to give you guys a little uh, background as to what's going on, my wife has to go in for some knee surgery. And Greg and I are going to record a couple episodes a night for a couple of weeks just because I need to be able to uh, help her with the recovery period. It's only it's only a day surgery, a couple of weeks, but that's a couple of weeks that I won't be able to record. So we're getting in, we're getting to it a little early. And as you've noticed, as always, I've got Greg here with me on one of these sides, you know, I don't know which one. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, Greg? Oh, you know, I'm I'm pretty ecstatic. You know, I was uh, as we were talking about earlier. I was uh, came down with something yesterday, but thankfully today I feel uh, much better. Uh, Do you have a good Easter? There was an Easter. Surprisingly, it was all right. We did the we did the church services a Good Friday, Easter Sunday at home. Uh, my allergies were kicking up. The kids' allergies were kicking up. And, you know, just to be safe, just in case it wasn't allergies, which it totally was, um, we stayed home instead of going out. And, uh, yeah, I met up with my sisters. Uh, well, tried to meet up with my sisters on the weekend. One forgot, and because there's a park near us. We all live in the same town. Um, so one of my sisters and I went, uh, and my family and their family, you know, we kind of gathered at the park. And, uh, you know, it's nothing, nothing too, uh, nothing too big. You? Yeah, nothing too much. My mom came up, uh, and, uh, on Monday we went antiquing and, uh, I managed to find a really cool, uh, score. I found a, uh, new, uh, estate, uh, uns- but it was new in box uh k woody including uh the pamphlet and everything so it was like mm. unsmoked untouched uh, even had the original price tag uh around it uh and uh you know, it was quite a nice find k woodies aren't my favorite pipes uh i i tend to find that like the stem uh, like they, they smoke well with certain blends but uh I don't know, the, the stem isn't my favorite, but one, the pipe was a, a really nice looking pipe. Uh, nice big uh, billiard or Dublin kind of shape. And uh, two, like finding a, a pristine pipe like that, that isn't, you know, all like smoked to bits and everything. Like it, I felt uh, like it was something worth picking up. And so I did. Nice, nice. So, speaking of pipes and whatnot, what are you smoking tonight? Looks like a bulldog tonight. Yes, a quarter bent bulldog. Uh, it's uh, by GBD, and uh, tonight I am smoking uh, CND's uh, Sea Dog, which is a nice mild English blend. You know, it's not one of my favorites per se, but uh, you no, know, I haven't necessarily had a bad smoke out of it either. So. Yeah, I'm also smoking a uh, mild English blend. It's a it's a Sutliff English. It's their super value line. It was something that uh, I ordered once when I didn't have uh, have much cash, but I wanted to uh, buy some pipe tobacco. And uh, you know, I've had it for four years now. Well, actually, see, what's the date here? December 2017. So just over three years. Three years, four months. Yeah, actually, uh, both this pipe and the blend that I'm smoking in it, I got at the 2018 Chicago Pipe Shop. Uh, Chicago Pipe Shop. Yeah, the Chicago Pipe Shop. That's basically what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which and- was going to happen this year, but was sadly canceled last minute, which uh, it's understandable, you know, but uh, it, it's a shame. I, I was looking forward to it. 
I didn't hear about that, but I, my podcast listening has been uh, lax, so the news isn't getting to me. Yeah, they were going to do it, but uh, uh, it was going to be sometime mid-July, but uh, they were concerned about uh, travel plans for their international uh, vendors and customers and didn't want to put on a show without them. That makes sense. People like, like I understand the international thing, even though like, I've come right next door or I can't get across the border. So I, I know there aren't many Canadian vendors that would have been there anyway, but still, there's a lot. I know just in my area, there's a group of about four or five people that go every time. So they'd, they'd have been disappointed it was on, but couldn't go. Yeah. So it does make sense in a way. Yeah. It's probably a wise decision. Me, I'm smoking my uh, monstrosity that I made for my first uh, Cobb Foolery contest. The one that I called the Chocolate Factory because wife thought it looked like something that came out of the Chocolate Factory and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. For some reason, like, to me, it, it, it's not, but, it, like, it kind of reminds me of, like, an MC Usher type of contraption. When I thought uh, of that, the name would have probably reflected that. But I'll tell you, because of all the, the, the different the air chambers in this thing, it's hard to keep this sucker lit. Yeah. But it's a nice, cool smoke. I just like to pull it out every once in a while. That would definitely turn some heads if you uh, went around uh, town with that one. Well, they always say, um, well, Bo York usually says sometimes, well, I haven't heard it recently, but a lot of times he used to say, um, you know, when you're smoking a pipe, you're already making a statement. You should smoke a church warden, you're, you're making a, an even bigger statement. Well, I'm sorry, I think this gives a bigger statement even yet than a church warden. I mean, because it's multicolored, you know, you just can't stop but notice this thing. Right. It's very impressive. But anyway, that's uh, that's enough for pipes today. We got a pipe centric episode coming up next week, but we still have to talk about Avatar: The Last Airbender. And today we're talking about episode number something, where Katara gets herself arrested for earth bending. Yes, very poorly which I was almost Momo that was uh, arrested for a moment there. You really have to question the intelligence of these guards that are walking down down the path and see this. The lemur is earthbending. Yeah, there was a lot of, yeah, the guards weren't very smart. Um, I feel like the entire cast of uh, you know the good guys probably should take a couple uh, acting classes granted it doesn't seem to like ever bite them but uh you know it all i'm saying is work a little harder you guys look at those ears look everyone act natural If they you know, were already of, of actors acting, true. that would have been horrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a fun episode, though. Fun episode. Yeah, no, definitely a you know, good episode, a, a, you know, Katara episode. And they uh, they make a new friend with uh, Haru. Haru, yes, Haru, who I, his name I was pronouncing Haruk for the longest time. I just heard it wrong. But yeah, Haruk, the Earthbender, the only Earthbender in the village. 
until Katara, you know, you know, just gets him to use his earthbending to save an old man. Let's talk about that old man for a minute. Guy comes along, saves your butt. You'd have died otherwise, most likely. What do you do? You turn him into the Fire Nation. That's what you do. That's just the etiquette that that uh, needs to be, be looked at. You know, nobody's around. Only this waterbender girl and, uh, and the bender himself and you. And they take the time to stop and pull your old wrinkled butt out from under tons of debris. I probably would have killed you otherwise. Let's talk about him. <laughs> yeah, no, it, he, he's in the same category of people like uh, the people in... Um, the X-Men universe that uh, turn on their family members and friends when they find out that they have a immune ability of some sort. Like, uh, you know, hey, like, we're best friends, but uh, if you're somehow able to, like, make fireworks, you know, come out of your hands, like, uh, that's it. Like, I'm, I'm immediately terrified of you and will uh, turn you in to uh, whatever mutant hunting organization is out there. Yes. First time I watched this episode, I was there going, wow. Like, that's gratitude for you. Yeah, the only thing that I was thinking was that maybe it was out there on purpose to find you know, but then again it would be too elaborate of a, of a trap to do something like that but uh, that's the only other thing that I could think of I agree that that's that's a pretty elaborate trap to catch the uh, rogue earthbenders that might be left in this particular village I means that's a lot of setup for what possibly might be no payoff. Like, mm -hmm. there's nothing saying anybody would even have walked by at that particular moment. Right. But, uh, you know, it's. Haru is, uh, you know, the other character that I think is especially worth uh, talking about with this episode. Um, just because, uh, you know, it's, so far it's kind of been rare for us to encounter other, you know, you know, it's a kind of a special deal to run into other vendors. Yeah, and, and him and Kintara, aside from the bending, also had a, a little bit of a little bit in common there with the with both at the begin begin beginning mid slash middle of the episode, where you know both their parents are gone through Fire Nation uh, interference. You know, Katara's mom's killed by the Fire Nation, although we don't find that out for quite a while. But it's hinted at strongly, but we don't find it out for sure till later on, and. Uh, Haruk's father is taken in one of the first uh, attacks on the Earth Kingdom this village where he lives. Now, given that, you know, the old man is still alive, obviously not at the beginning, beginning of the Hundred Year mm -hmm. War. I think it was about like five years previous. That, uh, That's probably a good, uh, good estimate. But, uh, yeah, it's a interesting episode in the sense that, you know, you hear you have Katara that's, you know, like she feels bad once uh, Haru is, you know, taken captive because she feels at fault for it and so she willingly 
goes after him to find him and gets herself put in the same situation but uh when she you know at first you know it's a, a wonderful thing being able to see the you know, the reunion between haru and his father but uh these characters are just kind of like hopeless at the moment because they're stuck on you know a metal ship where you know surrounded by metal which they can't bend remember that um and uh ultimately they're forced to behave and and follow you know their orders as a way to just simply keep on living but other than that they have no real hope whatsoever of uh, ever escaping and even even haru once he's there he's initially very hesitant to uh go against uh any of the fire nation you know guards there well yeah i, I and i can i can see uh i can see the that position i mean this is before Toph is even a character, but before, certainly before she invents metal bending down the road. So, I can see where he would he would you know just go along with what his dad's got going on there. They they're making the best of the of the thing, hoping the war will end soon so they can just go home and you know just just trying to survive. Which honestly, most people would do in a situation like that as long you know as long as you know, like like not in some sort of you know, death camp. Which it didn't seem that these people were. They're just building things for the Fire Nation and just trying to survive. Right. So it makes sense that that would be the uh, overall um, state of the of, of the prison. Yes. And he is the first one to react when the coals went at the end of the episode where they, they bring up the coal from the chute, get it up there on the main deck, and uh, he's the first one to start trying to run ahead. Even though Daddy blocks him for a minute. <clears throat> right. So, Haru is, uh, yeah. is I, I, as far as I'm concerned, the uh, person who instigates the, uh, af- the first reaction uh, after Katara gives her second speech of the episode. Right. Yeah, and you know, like Katara is really trying hard the whole episode to motivate uh, the uh, Earth Nation uh, benders uh, to rise up against their captors. But at the same time, it, it's understandable why that they don't, because they're just completely outmatched at the moment. But it's thanks to Aang bringing up the the coal that uh, finally gives them that spark of hope. And once they actually start fighting, like it, it is a pretty impressive fight. Um, like it, it was just fun to kind of see the Earthbenders uh, using their abilities at that moment. Absolutely. Also Prince Zuko in this episode. Yes. Uh, and he has uh, Katara's uh, necklace. That will uh, be a th- be a be a thing. That comes back up later. Right. But I think that that essentially kind of covers it. Uh, you know, nothing too or significant, just more world build, building, just kind of showing uh, more of the Earth Kingdom, which is which is cool. Uh, you know, especially at this point. Uh, you know, I if I was watching the show for the first time as it was airing, you know, kind of hoping that. Uh, Haru would join up with them, with them, and uh, go on. But uh, 
you know, they're saving that role for another character to come uh, in the next season. Yeah, it's a little soon to have an Earthbender in the squad. I mean, Aang still hasn't mastered water at this point yet, which is the first thing he's got to do before uh, he can move on to Earth and fire. Right. Which is a good point. But yeah, it's a great little episode. Doesn't move the the plot along much, but still fun, fun little one-off. Get some character building going on. Yeah. Yeah, really, again, just a, a good, you know, solid episode for Katara and just showing her uh, just personality and role on the team. All right. All that being said, we'll just uh, take it off there and you want to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me at DrAlien201 on Twitter. Um, you can always email us if you have any suggestions at uh, reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Greg, where can the good folks find you? You can find me at the underscore Badger Piper on Twitter. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me as the Badger Piper. And uh, I also have a WordPress type blog uh, thebadgerpiper.wordpress.com you can uh, read my stuff up on there and that'll be it for today so we will just wish you good smokes great entertainment and we will see you next week chat with you later